I made some new acquisitions of pegmite crystals from Pakistan. Fluorite, topaz, beryl. You see these aquamarines? How many times have I dreamed before the windows of the museum in Paris? On the road that leads me to the north of Islamabad, in Pakistan, I know they have always been the starting point of my quest for precious stones. Knowing my passion, the curator of the museum asked me to find the mine from which these stones were acquired. It is at Gilgit, two days' drive from Islamabad, that I meet my first contact, a dealer in precious stones and aquamarines. I have a contact in the valley of Nagar, in the village of Sumaya. His name is Murtaza Amir. He is 25. He is the chief. He takes the men from the village to the mine of Chumar Bakar. This mine is about 6,000 meters above sea level. In November, the snow falls and remains for nine months before melting. It's the right time to go. Say you came from me. The road along the Hunza is under constant threat of landslides. In the Chalt region, where the tectonic plates of Russia and the Indian subcontinent collide, the roads are perpetually potholed, and men are there to rebuild them every day. After skirting the Hunza, we arrive in the Nagar Valley, dominated by one of the highest peaks of Karakoram, the Rakaposhi. The village of Sumaya is located at 2,500 meters in altitude. The Chinese border is not far. Here, they are unaccustomed to seeing foreigners. Women are hidden. It is Shiite land. Formerly, the inhabitants of this valley fleeced the rich silk merchants from China. Today, they live off their orchards, terrace fields, irrigated by glaciers, but also the sale of aquamarines from Chumar Bakar. It is our ancestors who gave the name of Chumar Bakar to the mountain. Chumar means iron, Bakar means clay. The mine was discovered in 1988. Only the people of Sumaya can go to the mine, yes. Access is denied to everyone else. People from other villages and also to foreigners.
Between June and November, hundreds of villagers work at the mine. Even for well-advised mountaineers, the trek to Chumar Bakar remains an expedition that needs to be well organized. Amir invited me to the final preparations. We are organized in a very precise way. It is me who provides the money to buy the machinery, the explosives and the food for the people who work at the mine. And I get what I invested back in the sale. Before our ascent, Amir tells me that he has to go talk to the shaman. We're here in the land of fairies, and our presence in the mountains can cause them displeasure. According to legend, a hunter in pursuit of a feline went beyond the glacier. He found a blue stone on the ground. He spoke to two men in the village about his discovery and told them that in Chumar Bakar the mountain gave aquamarines. Both speculators who went up forgot to consult the shaman. One died on the mountain and the other in his home shortly after. <laughs> You'll need to toast wheat and distribute it to five girls in your village. They must eat all of the grains completely. That is what must be done before starting your journey. And if you doubt it, and if you want to make the fairies even happier, you will kill a goat. And it will bring you a lot of luck. When the weather permits, the men of Sumaya are accustomed to climbing Mount Chumar Bakar in a single day. But for me to acclimatize, we spend the night at 4,000 meters. We cross villagers coming down from the mine. 
The news is not good up there. It snowed. For them, it is the end of the season. They have found no aquamarines. Their only spoils are rose appetite. The day comes to an end. The miners, following the recommendations of the shaman, sacrifice a goat. This will be our dinner. At the gates of this fairy land, pagan practices are intertwined with religious beliefs. The second day of ascent, a migraine must be overcome. It is the result of the high altitude in the mountains. In the mist, the Silkian glacier is even more terrifying. Up high, where there are strong winds, avalanches are triggered. Last year, there was a tragedy. Two people died because the ice broke. It is a dangerous area where accidents often occur. We leave the donkeys at the foot of the glacier. They can tolerate neither the cold nor the altitude. We've each distributed the material amongst ourselves. <laughs> After two days of walking, we finally arrive at Chumar Bakar. Even the strongest falter and suffer the altitude sickness. Everyone has looked forward to this refuge. Five o'clock in the morning, waking up to ice cold water. My first night at 5,600 meters above sea level was difficult. Tea for breakfast is our only source of heat. The machines carried up by the men are already in action. Fifty men are on the face of the mountain. There are older people who work with us, like my father who is 60 years old. He is here now. At this altitude, every action requires effort. 
especially since the granite is very hard to work. Even the machines lack oxygen. There are no unnecessary movements. Everyone knows their role. Some prepare the ground, others pierce the wall to introduce the dynamite. Sometimes we work for one or two months without finding anything, but we do not lose hope and continue to look. It was a day worth very little. Tomorrow, Amir and his men will continue to advance in the mountains. It is 5 p.m. Night falls quickly on Chumar Bakar. The temperature is around minus 20 degrees Celsius. The evening will be short. <laughs> Here you can see white lines on the rock, that's quartz and mica. There's also silver and gold. For us it's a good indication, it's the sign of a presence of aquamarines here. Patrick. After such a discovery, the smiles are back on their faces. When it is time for tea and chapatis, the stones will change hands. Miners do not expect to return to the valley to make the ritual of the blanket. The buyer and the seller each put their hand under a blanket laid on the ground. The buyer makes a proposal by pressing one, two or three fingers of the person who is selling. The price varies depending on the number of fingers seized, according to a precise code. One who presses a single phalanx has 100 rupees, 
to 1,000 rupees for two fingers, and three fingers is 10,000 rupees. Pakistani, with us it's like everywhere. There are also rich and poor. Last year I found an aquamarine crystal which was about six pounds. It was a beautiful color, but it was not perfect. A little damaged, it must be said, by the firing of the dynamite. I sold it in the valley to a vendor and I earned $1,500. When we sell aquamarines, we share the proceeds amongst all of us. It depends on the work, of course, and also on the materials provided. Having shared the lives of these men for several days, I gradually gain their trust. They do not hesitate to show me their finest stones, and I will likely give them a good price. Tomorrow I will descend into the valley with Amir, leaving behind all these men, extracting the treasure of Shumar Bakar from the mountains. Allah, I shall Allah.